given that Christmas is just around the corner, I'm in the mood to start this off by saying something nice about Francis. <laughs> I know, right? But hear me out. Francis has a trait that I do actually like seeing in a pope. He doesn't put up with being ignored by members of the hierarchy. That is actually a good trait to have in a pope, but of course we have it in someone who pushes revolutionary change instead of protecting the traditional faith. Such is the state of things today. But this trait of his may be very useful today, given the story I have for you of the German bishops openly deciding that Catholicism is just too hard and that they're going to embrace a sacramentalized version of group hug Protestantism instead. Those wacky Germans and their Protestantism. The Germans had engaged on their own synodal path some months ago, and they launched this German synod movement at the time that the Pan-Amazon Synod was moving forward. They openly said they were going to push for deaconesses, the so-called very poor body, and of course, they were going to push for the unholy grail of the modernists, the elimination of Catholic sexual morality, in favor of the sexual mores of the world. When they made that announcement, Francis publicly gave them a soft rebuke, and said that they must work with the universal church as a whole, and not go their own way that this might get constitute schism. And, of course, instead of listening to him, they went their own way anyway. And the first fruits of that made the news over the weekend. So let's get into this, and I'll end on why I think my nice words about Francis probably won't amount to much anyway. Back in October, near the start of the Pan-Amazon Synod, the German Bishops' Conference took a break from helping German NGOs plan on how to rob the Amazon and hand it over to the UN in order to plan their own German Synod, which they dubbed the Launching of the Synodal Way, kind of love this modernist lingo. For those not familiar with that and what the synodal way is supposed to be, it's where the church basically devolves into the Anglican church and lets the national bishops conferences dictate what the faith will be. Basically, it's breaking the church into a thousand pieces with unity around the Pope, something that is more symbolic, except of course, for when it becomes expedient to have a Pope who can push the revolution. And make no mistake, this is the revolution of Vatican II picking up steam into its next phase. There have been many synodal or synods in the past, but clearly today this is something different, and the German bishops are using this to promote all manner of sin, including and especially the sin that Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church is so publicly obsessed with, as well as implementing the most revolutionary reading of Amoris Laetitia. And even better, they brought in a bunch of non-Catholics and nominally Catholic modernist social scientists to help them implement the revolution in Germany. They did this by using these modernist and non-Catholics as formal consultants for the German Synod, and this consultation has made headlines. What was their purpose? Here's a quote from the German press release. If the syntax is weird, it's because I used Google Translate to translate it into English. Quote, With the consultation, the Commission wanted to make a contribution to discuss the topic from a sexual medicine, theological, anthropological, and moral theological point of view, in the state of ecclesiastical teaching office on questions of sexual morality, as well as to shed light on the history and background of Catholic sex education. The meeting in Berlin was held in conjunction with that of Professor Dr. Andreas Lubhodopol, organized with the Berlin Institute for Christian Ethics and Politics, Archbishop Dr. Heiner Koch, Bishop Dr. Franz Josef Bode, Bishop Wolfgang Ippold, Bishop Dr. Peter Kolgraf, as well as several auxiliary bishops from the Faith and Family Commission, who discussed with sex doctors, moral theologians, dogmatists, and church lawyers. End quote. We'll get back to those bishops in a moment. This is clearly letting the world dictate the terms of the faith to the church. The bishops are letting outside consultants, many of them non-Catholics, dictate what the church will teach when it comes to morality. This is made all the easier by the fact that the German Bishops' Conference is overwhelmingly made up by dissenters from Catholic morality. But this is just another selling out of the faith by the pastors to the wolves of the world. And here we are, expected just to sit back and take it. But these pastors, who are they? Well, here are the names of a few of them. I know I just read them, but here they are again. Most of them you won't know, but one you might. Archbishop Dr. Heiner Koch, Bishop Dr. Franz Josef Bode, Bishop Wolfgang Ippold, Bishop Dr. Peter Kolgraf. One we'll zoom in on here is Bishop Franz Josef Bode. Bishop Bode was one of the German names which kept popping up in the news in relation to the Amazon Synod, and he was a big promoter of, the, of that satanic working document which called for a restructuring of the priesthood to make it more inclusive. Now he's taking the underlying logic of the Pan-Amazon Synod, as well as the Synod on the Undermining of the Youth and the Synod to Attack the Family, and bringing them all into the German so-called Synodal Way, which is a fancy way of saying that they're going to have the church in Germany go its own way and in their minds, hopefully lead the rest of the church into a new era of enlightenment where the tough moral issues are no longer tough and the church preaches a false gospel of group hugs and NGO-backed kumbaya. 
But my favorite thing about this is that the bishops all use their secular titles as well. Notice the inclusion of doctor in their names. It's kind of weird to see that, and they're clearly doing it to lend themselves credibility. I mean, after all, the secular world gets it when it comes to matters of morality, right? It's all part of the dignity of the human person, right? Nothing gets the church more anger directed at it when Catholics actually say what the law of God is regarding sexual morality, and the German bishops here have decided to embrace the logic of the world, and have quietly highlighted their own credentials as worldly authorities. It's strange to see, but here we are. I'm going to read to you part of the press release that is most controversial, and I'm only going to change some of the language to make it suitable for this platform, which, if you've been paying attention, has tightened the terms of service. So with that in mind, quote, The chair of the Family Commission, Archbishop Dr. Heiner Kolk, emphasized that the synodal path should be started impartially and without any fixed positions, but by no means without knowledge of the state of the art. There was consensus on the question that human sexuality encompasses a dimension of lust, reproduction, and relationships. There was also agreement that the sexual preference of humans is expressed in puberty and assumes a hetero to uh, James Martin orientation. Both are normal forms of sexual predisposition that cannot or should not be changed by any specific socialization. In the Church's deliberations, this means that any form of discrimination against the James Martin Brigade must be rejected, as has been acquired for a long time as a teacher and is also explicitly emphasized by Pope Francis in the post-synodal letter Amoris Laetitia. However, the question of whether the teaching ban on the James Martin lifestyle is still up to date, as well as the question of the permissibility of using artificial contraceptives in marriage, and in the case of unmarried couples, was controversial. End quote. And there you have it. These men are going to normalize the James Martin lifestyle and are likely to promote the use of the pill in the church, as well as fully embrace the officially recognized position on divorce and remarried receiving the Eucharist at Mass. Here the words of Sister Lucia of Fatima come to mind. The final battle will be over marriage and the family, as well as the warning from Our Lady of Boy and Successo. Then our day the sacraments would be blasphemed. It's mildly terrifying to see this all play out before our eyes, but again, such is the nature of the state of things today. Now for a sign of some hope, some resistance. I'll quote the Life Site news piece on this, which detailed the warning given by Cardinal Brandmuller to the German bishops. Quote, Cardinal Walter Brandmuller, President Emeritus of the Pontifical Cat Committee for Historical Sciences, has warned the pres that proceeding down this path, one that questions the Church's teaching on the celibate male priesthood, the James Martin lifestyle, and marriage, could lead to a national church without nearly any ties to Rome. The dubia cardinal stated that this would be certainly be the surest path into the final decline of the German Church. End quote. And he is right. How does a national bishops conference meet to promote a clear breaking from the traditional teachings of the faith lead to anything but a break from Rome? This is the path of schism, and there appears to be nothing stopping these maniacs from going down that path. So in closing, yes, I do think that this side of the dictator pope should come out, and that he, he should come down with the wrath of Francis on the German bishops. But, you know, I don't think he will. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he did unleash his wrath upon them for defying his orders so very publicly. But in the end, there are really two things to consider. One, many of these bishops are either members of the St. Gallen group or have been heavily influenced by the St. Gallen group or are at least affiliated with members of it. And two, Francis may be using the German bishops to push for revolutionary change in the church in the way that gives him both plausible deniability and the ability to point them to them and say, see, the people of God want this and who am I to judge? That is a scary thought, but it, it's definitely not outside the realm of possibility for a practitioner of Peronist politics. But if this is permitted to go forward, then the apostasy will grow, as more of the faithful around the world will feel vindicated in their living a depraved lifestyle and, of course, leaving the faith. I can already hear Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church quoting the press release and any future formal German documents to promote the normalization of the sins that cry out to heaven for vengeance. And remember, if this is permitted to be normalized in Germany, then the bishops' conferences around the world will almost certainly embrace this document too, because at the end of the day, one of the key features of the crisis in the church is that many of the shepherds have heard the world say that Catholicism is too hard, to which these men responded that they'll soften the faith to make the world like it more. And instead of the world joining the church, the laity are leaving. So yes, for once I'd love to see the dictator Pope flex on these maniacs and demand that they fall in line, even if he's only doing it to restore his authority over them. But that probably won't happen. Anyway, keep praying for the church, and remember that today is the first Ember Day, Ember, Ember Day of the Ember Days for the Advent and Christmas season. So thank you for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.